Hey, welcome to the Coach's Box. Ray Halbrook here with live stream STL, our special college night here at uh, La Pachangas. Thanks for tuning in, and if you're on your way, come on out, and you're going to get 15% off your bill tonight, and a chance also if you uh, get, on, get in on our chair over here, you're going to sit down in our chair and, and ask a question. A good question gets you a $25 gift card, so make sure you uh, check that out as well. So come on out to La Pachanga. We're going to open up uh, our microphones here for uh, Mr. Mr. Miller. How are you, Coach? I'm here, man. Hey. Oh, whoa, you are a little here. feedback so a little there. Feedback it's because I'm loud and obnoxious. Right. That is so okay. true. Yeah, yeah. So true. Okay. The loud part, right? Mm, obnoxious. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I do like the black on you. It looks a lot better than that blue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, I mean, I've had years of wearing a lot of black. Yes, you have. You know, it's the last That's seven true. years. And then a couple yeah, years yeah. before that. And then, I mean, then a couple more before that. So, I, Well, they could probably say there's some similarities to that black and this black and yellow. But yeah, anyway, well, oh, yeah, let's go. I mean, I'm sporting my Mizzou shirt. Yeah. Thanks for you know doing college night with us, Coach. I didn't have yeah. any shirts that fit. I've gained a little weight. You know, I didn't yeah. notice that. <laughs> no, nobody said anything. <laughs> I made sure I wore my yeah, UK we blue all, here. Yeah, we all see. I mean, you look this, like the blue Kool-Aid uh, man. Yeah, right hey, that's, that's the way it is. <laughs> I know, you know, I know. Support and, your and, and, you know, Coach Ray down there, I, I mean, he's, support, he's sporting a SEMO shirt. Hey, SEMO. That's all you got. Yeah, hey, SEMO was all right a little bit this year, you know, weren't they? Yeah, they're okay, yeah, I guess. Bad, bad average. They bad had a, average. Did they have a team? <laughs> yeah, they had uniforms and everything. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> I, I will say I, their girls' coaching staff was really nice yeah. at that coaching clinic I went to. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Gave me some good drills. It's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Girls program there's mm-hmm. been pretty good. Pretty, then pretty they decent. when they try not to cheat and things like that. No, that no, bad. that's UK. No. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. No, that's no, KU. Wait, that's wait, KU. Wait. You well, got the U. Well, the K Indian, K well it's Sorry. same color blue that's almost. That's true. You just you just turn the letters around. And you know, I mean, works. we do have some KU fans in here somewhere tonight. I know they're hiding stuff. because nobody wants to <laughs> acknowledge that. I mean, John Maddox. <laughs> Yeah, he's you can't in here call tonight. out people in the audience. Come on, <laughs> sure man. I can. Sure uh, I can. He's like one seventh your boss. You can't do that. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough of this nonsense. <laughs> I think we got a pretty fun show. It's it's going to be probably a lot of free for all. Oh, I would have to say for the most part, uh, when we're talking about college sports and uh, college basketball in particular, and we just thought it'd be a fun time just to really kind of dive into it and get a little banter going about. Uh, probably our favorite teams. We'll probably mostly be picking on Riley and his uh, <laughs> obsession with Kentucky. Perfect. But that's okay. Bring it. And then uh, later on in the show, um, hopefully we'll get you guys' uh, questions and you'll get a chance to sit in this nice little captain seat over here. I don't know if Ray will show it, but you get a chance to sit here and ask us questions, and we're going to answer them on the spot instead of screening your questions. <laughs> you know, basically on the, yeah, Dan Boyer. Yeah, you Dan Boyer <laughs> jumping in. <laughs> see, so, Dan, you know, come on in. And uh, make yourself yeah. known here in front of everybody. Yeah, that, Dan, uh, why don't you come in and ask that same question? That way you know if it's on tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, you've got <laughs> it. I love it. Anyway, uh, we're going to do that. And then later on in the show, we're also going to do trivia. Um, oh. I think Ray and, and Jeff Whitener has come with some trivia questions. And we're going to play for this obnoxious-looking trophy. It's beautiful. Let me, yeah, let me take a drink yeah, out of that thing. Take a drink out of it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like the you Stanley like Cup there. I mean, that's that, beautiful. That's got some weight to it. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. I mean, you can knock somebody out. I don't out. need to touch it. This I'm not going to win. It's, it's so not. I'm just getting rid of that thing. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, I'm it's, not a trivia it's not guy. Like the, it's not like the trophy before the Stanley Cup that the conference winners, you, you can touch, touch that one. Is it multiple choice? I don't know. Ray, do we have life We have multiple choice. Yeah. So you're telling me there's a chance. It's almost one of the million talk. One out of four chances here. <laughs> but, uh, no, we're, and then if you guys have a great name for the trophy, we all can't come up with anything. We're not creative. Yeah, please yeah. please vote. Have comments. Except you, Dan. You don't get any any kind of uh, choice of what the name for the trophy is going to be. So, <laughs> any, everybody else, you have free reign to, to message on there. Come up with the an obnoxious name and be funny. Please be appropriate because this is a family ish <laughs> show. That's and right. um, that way we can kind of have some fun with it. This trophy is going to be passed along every week to the winner. So if you win, it's a you carry it the entire week. I love it. And it's a traveling trophy. There so that's we how we're going to do it. Go. Nope, I don't have to worry about it. I don't yeah. have to take anything home. I mean, you don't have to sandbag so much, okay? It's like a plethora of knowledge What's inside that jughead of yours. Yeah. What's our motto? Aim low. <laughs> 
So, yeah. Got, got a lot in that noodle over here. Yeah, that's too. true. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Noodles. Coach, that's right, baby. Look at this. I mean, I, I brought oh, it in tonight. Oh, look at this. Look at him. See, I told you that. So noodles is you in the lit, house. You know, yeah. and this just explains Blair perfectly well. <laughs> Illinois license plate. But he's a Kentucky fan. Makes no sense. How does that work? How does that work? That's because I'm a blue all the way through, my friend. Oh man, blue all the way through, huh? Who infected you with this? He said he's blue all the way through. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh. I am. I am. And but yeah, your skull colors are red. So it so is. I know. But red I still and black. bleed blue. I still bleed blue. I, I so, blue all for all right, the rest so, of my life. So, so how did you become a Kentucky fan? I think <laughs> inquiring minds, like all two people, want to know. <laughs> well, all two. That's a good idea. Yes, yes. Well, you know, my grandmother was a avid Kentucky fan, and uh, most people that <clears throat> knew me growing up knew that my grandmother was a big impact in my life. Uh, and so, so now he's going to make it hard for us to make fun exactly. of him. He's going to have the <laughs> sentimental story, and now I'm not going to be your, able to make fun of you. Your grandmother. Yes, my grandmother. It was a Kentucky fan. A huge Kentucky fan. Now, I'll tell you, growing up, um, you know, Kentucky basketball in southern Illinois wasn't on a regular tape uh, timing at 7 o'clock at night. It was on tape delayed on Channel 6 News after – the news on 10 So after they talked about the Salukis, which would be a team in your state yeah, well, uh, that you should root for I other am, than Kentucky. You know, I, I was mean, a big fan of the Salukis. Uh, Coach Rich oh, Heron oh. was a big avid of mine, a uh, fan of mine as well. Um, still does. Fan of him. Yes, <laughs> yes. He spoke at our uh, banquet um, a couple years back. Uh, most of my kids will remember that name. But, uh, you know, so uh, there would be many nights that at 1030 at night when the Kentucky basketball game would come on. And uh, we would we would basically watch that basketball game from about ten thirty at night till midnight every time the Kentucky was on. So um, it was a it was a pretty neat experience for me. So I kind of fell in love with the the blue and and uh, you know I'm still today uh, big fans. Um, if you come to my house, I'm decked in my basement is in Kentucky blue or St. Louis Cardinals. So um, it's a big thing for me. So. There you go. Man. Most of you guys have been into my basement. I don't think this guy hasn't. No. That yeah, guy the, hasn't. The, the but I don't, I don't think does. I've been no, in his basement. Uh, uh, you been in his basement? No. Oh. My bathroom's Mizzou. We I mean, know this. Yeah, yeah. When I we live came in. the first show, I was like, man, this is awesome. in Mizzou bathroom. And, and then it's like Blair's. It's like, yeah. It's uh, like, yeah that's bad. why I've never went down there. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Kern, you know I don't like Kansas. Hey, Quit that. It, it is the right blue, though, right, John Maddox? This is the right blue. Is that right? Again, oh. calling <laughs> people out. <laughs> got to stop doing that. I can do that. I can do that around here. <laughs> but, I mean, Rock Chalk. Wait. Uh, yeah, look at yeah. this. I already got people <laughs> jumping in on this. I know. And how can, and seriously, how can anybody be a Kansas fan right now? <laughs> I, I got to get on this. So let's just start on it. How can anybody be a Kansas fan right now? If, if, if that isn't the biggest, most obvious cheating program in the country, in any, any college sports. Yeah, I'm going to slap your hand and tell you bad boy if, if, and if move it, on. If it shouldn't be SMU Part 2, death penalty, I don't know what it should. It's blatant. It's right there. Are you cheating? Yes. Okay. <laughs> But how don't, bad? Don't how do bad. that again. I know, and, and Mizzou self reports. <laughs> it's like, yeah, self reports this is what and we gets did. worse off than <laughs> KU. Yeah, this is what we did. We're really sorry. Here's all the steps we did. Okay, you guys, you're not going to the postseason. You can't do anything. And all, are you Take kidding away some me? scholarships. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you can't do all this stuff. And it's like, can't, don't do it again. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> are you going to do it again? No. Maybe. Okay, maybe it's fine. We'll take maybe. Are you I'm, kidding me? I mean, I don't know. I thought maybe Calipari was at Kansas uh, instead of UK. I didn't know. Yeah, he, already, he got that out of his system at Memphis. That's, that's right. Oh, it was Memphis. Where yeah, he did the, all the kid that. who looked like Derrick Rose was took done. the SAT for him. Once again, that was the wrong color of blue. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, so he, he cleaned up his cheating ways and got smarter about it. Yeah. And then yeah. he goes to Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. It, well. You don't really want me to say what I really want to say, right? You can say whatever you want. It's a that's why, convention. That's why we're here. <laughs> it's a family show. Oh, that's true. Yeah, as long as it's not, you know, yeah. over the top. It says profane. call it like you see it. Yeah. I mean, let's. I may call it like I see it before the end of the night. Do, we'll hey, see do, how it goes. Do, do yourself a favor and just bleep it yourself. So that <laughs> you can see you have an air horn, you know, yeah, one of those air horns. Yeah. Great. Right, great. <laughs> What about you, McVay? What, what's, Duke. Your, what's your team? Let's go, Duke. <laughs> speaking of, yes. speaking of oh, cheating, uh, Coach K. Man, yeah, he's in trouble right There's some rumors about that. He's yeah, a little bit in trouble. Let's find out if Zion has to uh, testify or something in front of a 
Well, you could do what Mark Court. McGuire did and just say, I don't want to talk about the past. I mean, it worked out great for him, didn't it? It, it sure did. He's the only one. He must have paid attention to his government teacher and understood what his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination was. Oh, wow. Look at you. Man. Like I teach it, you know. Man, that's, just like he teaches good social it. studies teacher. I know. I, te- I teach pleading the Fifth, too. <laughs> I figured he was going to say something like that. I might have said plead, I plead the fifth before. I don't know. That's, that's too funny. There's so many jokes I just had. Right yeah, I just yeah, can't, yeah. Can't Call say. it like you see yeah. it, Coach Miller. Oh, Call no, it like no. you see it. I don't have a bleep button. <laughs> <laughs> I might do it after the fact. And then right. that's, that's it. That's so too late. But, hey, you, you can say what you want. I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's in the Geneva Convention. We already talked right. about that. All right, so Coach Miller, what what are we? Is, okay. it, is it the Mizzou? Is that, it the, that, uh, that is your big? That's your big fan right now, Mizzou. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always liked Mizzou, even when I was growing up. And I went to SEMO, and yeah, I went to SEMO. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, were yeah, they I, the Indians then, or were okay? They so the, the, the funny part is, is when I went to SEMO, it was it was when they dropped the Indians. They didn't have a mascot. And they were trying to vote on which mascot they wanted to use. So the year, the for two years, one of those years, we didn't have a mascot. So even when they played football, all the helmets just said SE Missouri State. There was no mascot. They had no idea what they were going to be called. And so it's, you, you go to a football game, it's like, yeah, go. Go, go us. Can't say Indians. Can't, <laughs> uh, go SEMO. <laughs> yeah, it's all the cheers. It's kind of like, yeah, oh, yeah, we can't do that. So when they became the Red Hawks, it's like, what, why are we the Red Hawks? Well, because it was the best of the list because the students put out the list of – Oh, like, the students the, are the, the ones The students that, did. Wow. And then they, nice. they all voted on it. And they, they, You know, listen, man, it, it's SEMO. And if you've ever been there and went to college there got to experience the college experience SEMO, some of the wisest decisions were never made at that place. <laughs> During that time, so the, it must the, be why my brother Dave went there. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> a lot of teachers go to SEMO. Just throw it out there for all of our. Uh, we'll my, be my mother graduated from there too. So. We'll be waiting for and Dave Jarvis saint. to comment Dave on this. Jarvis. Jarvis. <laughs> Jump on in. But no, I've been a Mizzou fan. I, I root for them. I'm just used to disappointment. Pretty much on a yearly basis, it's like, yeah, we're really good this year. Yeah, that's it. All right, thanks. You know, Chase Daniel had a great time when he was a quarterback, and that was fun. That was, that, that was, was good that years. Was, those were some fun. Those years. were good years, mm-hmm. and then Brad Smith. That was some I fun like Brad years. Smith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, it's kind of like, well, yeah, okay, well, yeah, we got a team. It's cool, <laughs> uniforms, and everything. So you're a Mizzou fan too, though. Oh, I'm big. Yeah, I love Mizzou. Me and my son Dylan love to go to Mizzou games, and. uh uh, yeah, uh, it's it's tough being a Mizzou fan. It is, but when uh, they did beat Kentucky one time, I oh, think I wow. gave you a bunch. Yeah, of well, well, I might have been at that basketball yes. game in Columbia, and you probably got a few texts. I did, I yes, did, I, and I, uh, uh, yeah, I remember it very well. My wife got those <laughs> tickets for me uh, <laughs> as a birthday gift. Um, happy birthday! I was so happy when they <laughs> lost. And, uh, it was so awesome. <laughs> we spent a whole weekend in Columbia. Well, you know, after that game was over, all I have. All I packed was Kentucky Blue stuff, you know. So oh, that's awesome. My wife's like, well, let's go to Kohl's and buy another shirt because we don't want to walk around Columbia all night long wearing this go big blue shirt. Yeah, that's, that's really a bad bad decision <laughs> if you would do that. Yes, and it was, a, it was a smart decision on our part to go to Kohl's and buy us a shirt, and then we would spend the evening uh, walking around Columbia. But, uh, I, yeah, they, they, they took it to us that year. And Now, that year that Kentucky ended up going to the uh, Elite Eight and – Missing the final four by a, a, a buzzer beater that year. So. I always like to hear that missing the final four. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, wait, I hear that all the yeah, time. Yeah, we hear that all the time. <laughs> Let's say they're the second most winning national championships in the country behind UCLA Cheaters. with eight. Cheaters. You know, UCLA has eleven, but uh, so I mean, they're second in line. I don't see anywhere where Mizzou's in that line anywhere. So maybe not in basketball. Duke's a couple of down behind there, so. That's what we're talking about, college yeah. basketball. Yeah. I, mean, it was just, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'd rather root for Duke. But, I mean. Yeah, I would root for Duke before I'd root for Kentucky. Now, <laughs> now I, don't get me wrong. I, I would like root for Coach. North Carolina before I'd root for either one of those oh, two. I don't know about oh. that now. Come on now. Yeah. I like we're Coach talking K. about obvious cheating there. Let's, let's go to that. <laughs> I like Coach K. I do really like Coach K. And I got the privilege last year to be able to watch Duke, Kentucky play in Indianapolis. Who won what that? A, oh, <laughs> who won that? Duke by about 50. It was uh, the most incredible game I've ever seen, witnessed in live in person. Um, I mean, that Zion was just amazing. 
Uh, I, mean, I, I enjoyed that game, too. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> I may have had a few to, to, to enjoy on the way home. Um, I had to go with my good buddy Brian Waits, who is a fantastic, oh, huge Duke fan. Duke Blue. fan. Um, <laughs> him and I are good friends, and we, we had to drive all the way to – there we were giving each other crap all the way there and back and then, and then on it was the way one back, sided all the way <laughs> back. the way back it was a little one sided <laughs> on the quiet right on quiet. the way back i was dead to sleep i didn't want to hear anything he had to say but i, no, I can no. see how this is he just leaned up against the window and he looks over and he says if you rip on me 13 or 14 more times we are not friends <laughs> he only stopped at he stopped at 12 he stopped at 12 <laughs> I was going to say, we wouldn't be friends a long time ago. Uh, you know, I, no, I mean, being a Mizzou fan, you're just used to disappointment consistently every single year. I thought maybe we, we got in the SEC, because the SEC is not normally, outside of Kentucky, it's been a very big basketball conference. Great. And all of a sudden, everybody starts getting better at basketball when Mizzou gets in. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Mm-hmm. I thought we had a little bit of a chance. Nah, it's, it's, on. it's gone. I mean, I'm still going to root for them, because this is the state – I'm from, mm-hmm. and I live in. I'd like to see Missouri State do well. SEMO, because I went there, even though they keep mm-hmm. asking me for money. Which I already paid you enough. <laughs> leave me alone. But St. Louis, you. Hey, I slew. I, I know some slew. Slew ball games are fun. Well, well I, you know why he's good. saying that? Because Travis Ford is there. Yeah, yeah. Travis Ford, I mean, Kentucky guy. Yeah, tra- but right. he did play at Mizzou. Yeah. Well, yeah, then but, he stupid yeah, and yeah. went yeah. to the Blues. Well, but he's smart. The smartest decision la- he ever made. Last year, last year I got the opportunity to go and watch a slew game mm-hmm. with Dan Boyer. Matter of fact, and it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I it. I, I had never been to a slew game. I'd been in the Chaffetz Arena and mm-hmm. watched high school basketball a little bit there. Uh, but I'll tell you what, it was a great experience. Mm-hmm. They've got a great fan base, mm-hmm. and I think they're they're building something it, there. It's nice. And yeah. and I like what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I hate saying it, it's even a lot more than what Mizzou's doing. Mm-hmm. And I really like where they're heading. So oh, I, I think you're getting some Missouri kids. That's it. Right. And go. we can talk about that. You got, I mean, you got Goodwin. You got Yuri Collins. You got some guys that are from mm-hmm. – the state, which yeah. is mm-hmm. good to see. I don't know, you know, if Kentucky. I'm sure they have some oh, Kentucky yeah. guys. Oh yeah, oh, oh they yeah. do. Who yeah. the manager? Huh? No, no, <laughs> no, the water boy. They got the player of the year in Kentucky, Mr. Basketball. Who's he? Uh, this next year, they didn't get Mr. Basketball in Kentucky. Oh, they didn't, they didn't get him. The, with this they didn't have a Mr. Basketball in well, Kentucky. I don't well, think. <laughs> you know, I, too I soon. Too <laughs> soon. You can't say that. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. So, uh, but I mean. I, you look at the recruiting, and that's one thing that I was going to mention you brought up is Mizzou and, well, SLU does a really good job of recruiting locally mm-hmm. uh, within the state or within the surrounding state, you know, um, Illinois or, or uh, Missouri, Missouri or whatever. So I think that's important, though, to, to see that the quality of basketball in our state mm-hmm. or around us um, mm-hmm. is. Well, yeah, Mizzou's you know? got Watson from Whitfield, who yeah. we've seen play right. live. Right. Multiple Unfortunately, times. I've seen him play. Not <laughs> against me, at least. But uh, well, we got to see him play live. And, uh, you know, it's good to see Mizzou and SLU trying to mm-hmm. close the borders down in Missouri mm-hmm. and get those guys to come to right. SLU or yeah. to Mizzou. Well, if you think about it, uh, it the, there's been a lot of really good talent that we've mm-hmm. had in Missouri that we've let get out and I know from like the eastern side for most part but at one point we've had we've had both Hansboro boys yes. who yes. are good okay. we had Tate we have Jason Tatum we have Bradley Beal mm-hmm. we have Otto Porter Jr. all these guys have went and played at the, Lee, at, at the NBA yeah. Yeah. Um, and, my, Miles way back when from mm-hmm. St. Louis and where do they go to school Hughes. they don't Larry well, Hughes but Hughes did Hughes go to yeah. Yeah. So. so but every we have let the borders go for so long and it's, it's good to see mm-hmm. Coach Ford mm-hmm. you know do not Justin sorry but Travis Ford, <laughs> Travis do, Ford. Do, a, do a good job of keeping those players here because that's what's going to get people involved and behind those programs. Mm-hmm. And I've said the same thing for years being a Southeast Missouri guy about SEMO. Mm-hmm. SEMO has just let all these kids go who are really talented players mm-hmm. that could play at that level. Mm-hmm. They've just let them go to other places and not taken an opportunity to get those kids or to use the JUCOs in the area to get those kids. So, right. well, and it's funny that you bring that up. That's, I think, one of the big problems everyone – wants Jeffco to get a boys team. And I think one of the big problems of why the boys team left was because they were not recruiting kids from this county Mm -hmm. or from even around this area. They were bringing people in from different countries, from Mm -hmm. different, you know, places instead of recruiting kids around here. And 
Uh, even the girls' program, I don't know that they recruit a whole lot of people from this county. A handful, so, and, I, and I think Mac, they do an excellent job of trying yeah, to get Mac some of does. the on, the on the girls' side. I mean, yeah. But the MAAA, I mean, there's a lot of talent. There's been a lot of talent in the last several years. But, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of local – Local players that stay local for a couple of years and and then you know move on to maybe a Division One or another 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 you know Division Two school. But yeah, I mean that that's one thing. Uh, you look back when Jeffco. I guess this is probably going on ten years now. When when the girls program when the women's program went to the national championship, uh, they had Danielle Adams wind up playing in the right. WNBA. She was a Kansas City product, but. Um, it, for the most part, you do look at some rosters, some ju- JUCO rosters, and you say, "Oh, Argentina, Australia, Italy, Spain." Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you got to fill your team with kids, right? mm-hmm. and you have to get them wherever you can mm-hmm. to get that talent to be able to compete. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, mm-hmm. somebody is going to want to see somebody they've seen before mm-hmm. yes. play. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's more fun when you can say, "I saw that kid play in high school. Mm-hmm. Look where he is now, or mm-hmm. look where she is now." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm compared to oh, somebody yeah, right. I have no idea so, who this kid is. I cheer for Watson every time I watch mm-hmm. Mizzou. I'm like, every time he gets in, I'm like, all right, yeah. come on, do something. So yeah. so what's the answer? How do you solve that equation if you are Mizzou or if you are SLU? How do you lock down these these prospects? Now, you got to understand Hansboro and Tatum, these are all lottery picks. These are all, you know, NBA stars. And, you know, Beal obviously look at, you know, his contract is, that he's going to get. I mean, how do you – how do you say come here instead of going to the Kentuckys, going to the Dukes, going to That's hard those to compete blue bloods? Against. Well, I know, I, and I know Otto Porter Jr. and his mm-hmm. family, mm-hmm. and Mizzou could have just as easily have, have gotten him, mm-hmm. and they just didn't. They didn't do the the, the little things. Mm-hmm. But then here comes John Thompson, mm-hmm. and he's, you know, basically walks in and says, "This is what I'm going to do," and he appeals to the family and. Everything, and a matter of fact, I mean, it was it was told to these these coaches recruiting him. This is all you have to do is you have to win over dad, hmm. and you got he's a family guy. He, Otto Porter never played any AU. Mm-hmm. He just played high school basketball, basketball. and that was it. Mm-hmm. And he was the number three pick in the NBA draft and Big East Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. And his contract's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be set for life, mm-hmm. but. We let that kid go. Mm-hmm. He could have been in the state. He could have played for SLU. He could have played for Mizzou. He could have played for anybody here. Right. But he, oh, he and didn't. I think Conzo Martin's trying to keep Missouri players mm-hmm. here. And mm-hmm. I think Travis Ford's done a good job. He's got several uh, Missouri or St. Louis area players on his team. Agreed. I mean, so I'm hoping they're going to steer more that way. I think it's going to be really interesting when they start, if even these, uh, you know, like Mizzou and and these local local schools will start playing more. I don't know if Mizzou and SLU are going to play each other this year. Are they not? There was no, a little bit of rumbling. They talk about, about it, but I don't think they – They were, they, it they were going to talk to Missouri State, and then that fell through. I think uh, Conzo wanted to put it on the schedule, and then something happened, and there was some turmoil or some confusion and frustration, and he pulled the, pulled the plug and said, we're not going to do it. We're not going to play Missouri State this year. So I did read that up like a couple weeks ago. But I will have to say this. I would rather watch – Instead of a border war game between Illinois and Missouri, I would rather watch Missouri play SLU. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, mm-hmm. me I like personally. to watch both. But, I mean, because I hate Illinois. And then I want to play. <laughs> That's all there is to I it. I want to play Kansas. I want to play on. Kansas. Let's, let's get the KU MU mm-hmm. rivalry back, back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The biggest cheaters against the people who were self reported. <laughs> and on that note, I think we should take a break, Ray, because it's about that time. Before it is I about dive that in time. here and start talking about the death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for Bleeding Kansas. I was waiting for us to stop uh, talking about that. <laughs> it's awful. We'll be right back. Since their inception in 1980, SMCI has always been about high integrity and treating people the way you would want to be treated, just like family. Mostly known as a commercial contractor, SMCI has now decided to give the family treatment to everyone. They are now opening their residential department to the public as home by SMCI so everyone can experience the home treatment. Everyone deserves maximum comfort in their very own home. Isn't it time you come home? Contact SMCI at 636 
866-337-4444 or on the web at homebysmci.com. You know, this live stream SDL has been a huge asset for Jefferson County sports, uh, in my opinion. I mean, getting these athletes, the, the, the camaraderie that they're out there and, and people can see them. I mean, to be honest with you, I got a, a call from a, uh, a coach yesterday um, about one of my athletes that said that they saw some of her games on live stream SDL. Awesome. So, I mean, that right there instilled to me that, that this is important. You know, this is important for those kids. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think it's great and I um, wish you guys the best. You know, and I've, if you're out there and you want to sponsor, this is a great opportunity for, uh, you know, kids to support, support kids of our local kids and, and get them support and get them uh, acknowledgement out there because we have a lot of great athletes in this county. Well, we appreciate yep. that. And at the end of the day, our mission is much the same as your missions, uh, coaches, uh, to help shine a light on these kids. Uh, I mean, get them exposure and, and get their name out there and, and help them. And if they can advance, that's they're better off, we're better off as a community, and, uh, and that's why we're here. I wonder what Coach Jarvis is up to. Jason! Jason! What's up? What's up? Ah! Oh, hang on a minute. I got a call from Blair. What's up? Ah! <laughs> ah! What am I doing? I'm sitting here watching the coach's box. Must be the wrong number. What's up? Where's the game? Where's the game? <laughs> Where's the game? There's the game. Livestream STL, now available on Roku. We are back here at the Coach's Box, live from La Pachanga. Come on out here, get yourself 15% off tonight by mentioning Livestream STL, and also a chance if you step up to our table here, up to our chair, we've got a microphone for you to ask a good question for a chance to win $25 gift certificate right here to La Pachanga. Before we get started for our next segment here, we're gonna let you know all the places that we're out, out here in the Facebook Waves, the Twitter Waves, YouTube, Roku Channel, Twitch, Periscope, we are everywhere. And the Roku channel, we'll talk a little bit about that. You want the Roku channel, you got to log on to videos.tkdsports.com. $4.99 a month, pretty cheap, so check that out as well. We'll let you guys know about something that we're also running. You want 15% off and you can't make it out tonight? Come on out Tuesday night. We have a Jeffco Diamond Cast baseball watch party. That's going to be Tuesday right back here at La Pachangas and Herky. Brought to you by Livestream STL. 5.30 and 7.30 are the baseball games between Festus and Charleston. Myself, your own Riley Blair, I believe, and Stuart McMilling, we will all be out there uh, calling the games together. Uh, I'll be doing the producing, but uh, I think we're going to flip-flop. Stuart's going to do a game and Riley's going to do a game, so we'll be live from Charleston, Missouri, 5.30 and 7.30. We're going to have that Roku channel Fired up here at La Pachangas. We thank the, the folks here at La Pachangas so much. Joel is awesome. So come out here again. That's 5.30 and 7.30. Uh, we'll have the Roku channel up, up for Jeffco Diamondcast Baseball. You'll see us at our Di Diamondcast Home Dome, brought to you by Home at SMCI. And if you're interested in broadcasting either our shows here or games, you got to get a hold of us here. Sponsor with us by calling us at 314 852 
1-800-242-4398. Or you can get a hold of us on the uh, email through livestreamstloutlook.com. I wanted to mention one last sponsor here real quick. Friends over at Just uh, USA Mortgage, the home of possibility, Mr. Justin Neal. Great guy over there, branch manager at USA Mortgage, 115 West Gannon in Festus. Give him a call, 314-287-4572 or festus.usa-mortgage.com. I believe I've gotten through everything. So we're going to go open up things right now. We're going to go into our second segment. And Mr. Miller, what do we got on tap here, my friend? Well, hopefully we get some questions in right now. Yes. Um, everybody, anybody, the first person has a chance to win a $25 uh, gift certificate here to Papa Chang is yeah. it's because we have nobody <laughs> who's wanting to jump up. Must so they're, must so you're telling me the odds are in their favor, right? The odds are forever. They're going to wait till the last second and jump up yeah. here the last minute. Like, so, me. Right? There we go. Um, so, yeah, get those questions in and uh, hopefully uh, we get a few more people piling in. I know there's supposed to be some more showing up. Yeah, Dusty. Where's Dusty Weiskopf? I thought he'd be traveling down here. He told me today earlier today that he possibly was coming, so I'm hoping that he, maybe he's just a few traffic all the way out from St. Charles, maybe he'll show up here shortly. That's not that's an easy drive. Uh, you'd think so. You would think. Yeah. So uh, let's let's just let's just start on you because it's just really easy to pick on you with your big blue shirt. I love it. <laughs> Bring it. But, Bring it. You know who who would you have to say is the the rivalry game for Kentucky that you get up for more than any other team that they play? Well, I mean I would say as any other team that they play, uh Probably in the past, uh, I'd probably say Louisville. You know, Louisville's a, a, a big-time game. It's always right after Christmas. It's usually the Saturday after Christmas, um, typically. you got so, that down to an oh, hour. Awesome. I know, this, I know their schedule. Don't worry, I do. I do. Um, so I, I think that's a, that's one of the bigger rivalry games. Um, you know, I got a always. couple Louisville shirts just for that game. Oh, bring it, bring <laughs> it, bring it. We'll come watch it at your house, yep. down on the big screen, downstairs. Take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bring you to my house because uh, you don't want to be in all that blue lettering going everywhere. So no, you won't be allowed in if you're wearing all that blue. You know? <laughs> the but tension it's is like so him when, thick it's like right him now. when the Patriots play. Oh yeah. yeah, I remember that. That was a fun night. That was a fun. It was night. a lot of fun. That was a fun night for one guy. And you know how much fun it. <laughs> listen, all you guys are having fun for three quarters. And we were. And it was a lot of fun. Just like, how do you think about that? What do you think about that? I'm like, yeah, I mean, they're, yeah, they're getting their butts kicked. And then it's a, it just happened. I'm over here going, man, well, that's great. I'll see you guys. How do you like that one? And um, I, the rest I mean, is history. It's not like I'm an Atlanta fan, so I mean, it yeah, wasn't like it, I was heartbroken. At I just, least anybody, but just. Anyone but the Patriots. <laughs> and they signed Cam Newton today. Yeah, I saw that. I know, saw right? I saw yeah. That. So, anyway, back to what counts in life. But, is... I, but I also think that the other, the other timing games that there are, any time that uh, the State Farm Classic that they do early in the year, you know, is either a Kansas, uh, Duke, or Michigan State. Um, that's usually the first game of the year, typically. Well, and they do that uh, – Tournament of Champions yeah. or whatever. State yeah. Farm Tournament yeah. Champions, uh, and it's either in Indy, Chicago, or New York. Um, oh, I thought that was called the bigger, Biggest Cheater Classic. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe it is. But, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, maybe it is. I mean, I know Michigan State ain't going to win that one. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. But, uh, I mean, that that's a pretty cool experience. I mean, I was able to go see the couple of those games, one in Chicago, and then and then a couple years ago we went to, to Indy. But, uh, I mean, any time that those – those four schools get together in the same building. I mean, it's electric when it comes to those four s- schools and their fans. I mean, mm-hmm. they're probably one of the four schools that have the biggest following amongst fans across the country. And, uh, I-, I mean, just the experience alone, being able to, to witness those four teams play um, in, a, in, a, in a gymnasium was just amazing. I mean, it was just amazing to – to watch and and uh, but uh, as far as like you said that the big time I think it definitely is Louisville that Saturday after Christmas and uh, you know it's just it's just a neat experience to be able to to see that I mean that that state gets up for that game you know I mean that's a, a rivalry state game and uh, it's just like any time else it would be a, the same concept if it was uh, you know Kansas and, and Mizzou got together I mean it's the same concept really. And that used to be a really good game when mm-hmm. Patino was still there yeah, oh, yeah. in, in Louisville. And, uh, I, I mean, I enjoyed watching it because there were some real knockdown, drag-out games. Yep. And what was 
I thought would be really cool is how it progressed, but then when Kentucky loses all their kids after one year because they go to the NBA, NBA. Mm-hmm. and then they bomb out there. But well, then they go to the NBA. And oh, <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Can you name some of those? Are they taking a pay cut? Uh, let's the see. Michael Kidd the, Gilchrist. They're probably they taking, taking a pay, pay cut. cut. <laughs> taking a pay cut. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, McVeigh with the haymaker here. Uh, You're just getting it all sides, well, aren't but you? Here, but here, talk about the – do you think they ought to get down with – Get rid of the one and done rule. I, I do. I, I, I and, and as a big a fan, Kentucky fan, I think that the one and done um, only hurts. How is Calipari going to handle that? I think it hurts high school sports um, for two reasons. One, I think that kids always think about you want to go play at the college level, and, and, and anymore a good athlete doesn't want a, a, a top notch Division one solid top twenty five pick doesn't want to play as a college athlete. They want to automatically think about the NBA. Well, a lot of that is because they don't make any money in college. No. Mm-hmm. It's, it's right. one thing to – I have a chance to go to the NBA and play, mm-hmm. and even if I'm terrible, mm-hmm. I'm still going to have a chance to play mm-hmm. and make league minimum or signing bonus, whatever they get. Or I go to college and I'm eating ramen noodles out of a package mm-hmm. because that's all I can afford right. unless I'm going to other schools and – there's money under the table, but I'm not well, saying it all or like that. I don't think it's that bad, especially at those blue, blue I, I blue was going to say, programs. it's not even that bad at Mizzou because no. I toured their facility yeah. and they had yeah. their, their their cafeteria was <laughs> yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're on the meal plans. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I also, you know, you think about it, though, as, as a college athlete, if you're, if you're one of the top 25 athletes of college basketball, I mean, honestly, what are you thinking for? You're looking forward to that next opportunity to be able to come to an NBA player. Mm-hmm. So I think that it, it changes the culture around high school athletics. Mm-hmm. I think that changes kids and how they perspective of putting into college, high school basketball. Um, because if a lot of those true one-and-done guys mm-hmm. really don't really focus too much on their high school basketball. They're looking at, I mean, I'm focusing on getting that number one draft pick and, and being have an opportunity to, to go play in the NBA. So – I think that would change high school sports a lot if they took it that to where you had to stay at least two full years before you could go into the NBA. I think that changes a lot of stuff. What do you think, Zach? Well, uh, you go back and just look, look at Duke there. You had Kyrie that got hurt. Mm-hmm. You had Tatum that got hurt. Yep. And you had Zion that got hurt. And everybody knows they're going to be one and done. And so you're a fan. And, I mean, you're still going to go to the ball games, but you're like, I'm, I'm only going to – I don't get a chance to see this guy. Uh, you know, you don't get to play in probably argue, arguably the greatest rivalry, you know, Duke right. UNC. Um, uh, but but what, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, what – baseball, they don't have to do it. Right. No. I mean, right. and why are we holding back someone like mm-hmm. – Zion didn't need to play college yeah. basketball. Right. Right. He didn't. He no, didn't. he could have went straight to the NBA. I mean, I, I you know, I'm trying to be the devil's advocate mm-hmm. here, but I, I mean – That's good. I mean, we need that. Yeah, of course, and I'm good at doing it. I thought that was my job. Uh, we, we do have a free market, you know, free market economy over here. <laughs> All right, social studies, guys. Still, no, that's what I'm saying. That's sort right, of a free yeah, market yeah. economy, and yeah. we're going to tell so-and-so, well, you have to go to college for two years. Mm-hmm. I mean. I understand football just because it, it, there's a difference from an 18-year-old versus a, sure. you know, 20, but, 22 But the year way that basketball has changed so much mm-hmm. because of AAU and the traveling circuits, it's – now, they are not mature enough at walking out of college. I mean, even one of the greatest basketball players of all time who did not go to college, Kobe Bryant, mm-hmm. did not set the NBA on fire his right. first year. Right. There is a learning curve. You mm-hmm. play more games. There's mm-hmm. a, the, the travel, mm-hmm. the grind, what it does to your body. That They have to – The social a, part of being, not social being, part is, being an it, adult and wait, you're 18 years old and you're out on your own and yeah, and i, I got to find an apartment. i got to – I mean, just the let, – Let's the, say you, you, know, you have your 18-year-old job, which was whatever, working mm-hmm. at a grocery store, making mm-hmm. minimum wage, or now all of a sudden, here you go. Here's thousands of millions yeah. of dollars. Mm-hmm. Here, go, go run, do mm-hmm. whatever. So I think that there's that learning curve, and the social part is a, is a good point. I kind of agree, maybe with what you you were along the lines of what you were saying. I don't have I don't have a problem with them leaving and going pro. I think there's all kinds of things you can do differently to make it work. Mm-hmm. Either someone drafts the rights to you and mm-hmm. sends you mm-hmm. to developmental leagues and things like that. I think the NBA would be much better if they would tap that market a little bit better, you know, and have right. more rounds of drafting kids. Mm-hmm. 
instead of letting kids go play overseas, I think we can keep our talent at home and even develop people and keep them here mm-hmm. by making the G League or D League or whatever it's mm-hmm. called nowadays and, and making that a bigger thing. But if they don't, let's just say, if I'm going to go to college, I think they should stay a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Why not? And, and, and give that, that college team the opportunity to have that player mm-hmm. play for them. I mean, really, I, and I, I know it's, it's different, but it's kind of a little bit of both because otherwise you're killing college basketball Agreed. by losing the best talent altogether. And, and I also think that, and I, I, I like the idea of giving an athlete an opportunity to, okay, if you're not one of the top 25 high school athletes and you're not going to be being able to be drafted in the top 25, yeah, and you go to college, you must stay two years. You can get drafted right out of high school, but if you're not one of the top 25 that gets drafted uh, as a high school senior, then you don't have the op- you have to must must finish two full years of college before you can go back into the NBA and have an opportunity to play in the NBA. I think if it did it that way, I think it opens up more of those you know those those team players that are are there for the right reasons. You know sometimes. And we hear about all this a lot of times where, you know, Coach Cal will always say this, um, you know, a lot of his <laughs> okay, go ahead. a lot of his players um, that are one and dones will say they were doing this to build their help, their family, you know, that they don't have anything. I yeah. mean, they, they're, they're making a name for their family um, to be able to provide for their family or mom and dad or whatever. So that's the reason why a lot of those kids go to that NBA is to prov- help provide for their family. Right. So. I think it, and you know, we talked a little bit about the college basketball, and, and maybe, and I think David even put on here at this, at that point, should high school going into college athletes have to sign a contract? You know, do you, do you do you give them a two year contract and they can't get out of that two year contract, or do you sign them a a one year contract, or depending on a lot of things? I mean, is there stipulations? Per athlete, I mean, you could you can make that contract however well, you want. And, and, athlete, and they are. Scholarships are one-year mm-hmm. contracts, basically. Mm-hmm. But to, just to kind of go back to your point, though, if you if you let the, the top talent, if you just say, hey, you go, because we're not talking about 100 people. We're not talking about 50 people. You're probably talking about 20 or less. Yeah, agreed. But what happens is if you let them go, then I think you get a better quality of college basketball because you know you're going to get that kid for four years. Yes. And you get, to, you get to see that freshman come in, probably come off the bench, but then by the time he's a senior, you've really developed that rapport, that relationship, and you know that guy, and you're like, hey, I can really, really root, root for that guy and for that, that, cl- that class maybe that came in. And that's um, what Michigan State does. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, mm-hmm. if you look, look at Michigan State, I mean, they, they have a lot of four-year athletes that may – be a decent athlete as a freshman, but they really start to develop and, and come into their realm right there as mm-hmm. sophomores and juniors. And all of a sudden, those teams are, are so solid because they've been around each other three or four years. They played together. They filled out at that mentality. And it goes into what we were talking about during break about mid-majors. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get a, you get those Butlers. You get the Wichita States. Yep. Um, you could We could sit here and argue about Gonzaga since it's, it's not in it. It's not a blue blood, and it's not in a major conference. But you can even talk about them, how you get those junior seniors playing against the Kentucky freshmen or the Duke freshmen, and who who winds up winning those ball games most of the time, or at least the Elite Eights, the Final Fours, and right. championships. I mean, it, it, is a, is, it is a huge topic, I think, always at draft time. I think that that's when they – and then they allowed last year where – uh, was it last year or the year before last where they hire be able to you don't have to hire an agent and then if you don't get a certain point you mm-hmm. can come back you can come back yeah um, you know and so I think that maybe has helped a little bit but I also think that uh, if they just stipulate it where you talked about maybe the top 20 has an opportunity you know to be drafted out of high school and, and Right off the bat, you you eliminate those. But who designates that? Well, that that's the thing. I mean, that that's. Oh, a lot you, of yeah, listen, you're you're 21. So, well, you're you're out. <laughs> uh, so I'm, you yeah. know, I'm graduating high school. I'm I'm 18 years old, and I'm I'm really good at heating and cooling. You tell me I can't go do heating and cooling because. Well, I mean, I think that's what I'm saying. You make an opportunity for them. You give them an opportunity. Hey, I you know, if they want to go to the draft, I think. I mean, that's on them. I mean, these people that hire an agent, I mean, that's not. I mean, if the agent's going to give them money, 
and you know and, and float them money, mm-hmm. and they don't get drafted. Let's just say, right? Okay, and that shouldn't forfeit their amateur status. Somebody was dumb enough to give them money. Let's just mm-hmm. they, right. they, they, that's that's their business decision. Oh, I think those kids should get to come back to college. What's no different if they're saying, "Hey, I'm going to go work at Six Flags." They're working. They're making money. Sure. But it's all about yeah. the NCAA, yeah. that evil institution, yeah. talks about amateur status mm-hmm. because you're making money. Mm-hmm. And it, it's to me, it's it's a complete double standard. Mm-hmm. And I could always jump back on the whole Kansas death penalty thing. I'll just leave it alone. But, you know, <laughs> you're talking about mid-majors. Let's go ahead and just change gears again. Mm-hmm. I, I personally would like to have, and as I watch college basketball, Love seeing mid-majors mm-hmm. do well in the tournament. Yes. Great. I really enjoy it. I would love to see them be. Oh, they're great. It's, it's great. Beat Duke, North Carolina, mm-hmm. Kentucky. Every If they beat Mizzou, I'm okay with that because I like the fact that you have kids mm-hmm. who are three and four year, been there, done that. They're, they're men mm-hmm. playing against kids mm-hmm. out, of, out of high school. These right. one and done guys, in which they're only there, and I know why they're there. But they, they're what my dad would like used to call a rented goalie. We're just going to bring this guy in, and then, okay, that's it, see ya. Mm-hmm. What, what investment does this kid have to the program? And in, in all honesty, what is, what is Coach K and Duke getting out of Zion Williamson here as we go tickets. along? Wait, no, right they now, got, they they got tickets. Right now. right now they might get some stuff taken away at the end. <laughs> Maybe. But yeah. they're blue blood. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. But you see happen. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it, no, I love to do like Kansas. Smacking the, eh, Are you going to do it again? Maybe. Okay, Most that's likely. good enough. Right. Most likely. You're good. Go on back. You do you. Yeah. So I would rather have those guys as a coach for sure. And you're always – it's like you reinvest in your program so your kids are always – they know the system. Mm-hmm. They're all system guys. Mm-hmm. Right. And when you're watching these teams play from a, from a coach's standpoint, the basketball is so much pure mm-hmm. watching them play. The motions are good. The screening's good. Mm-hmm. Ball movement's great, and you're like, man, but they play together, Mm -hmm. and there's chemistry there. And they might be undersized, they might be under-talented, but they do well against these schools. Mike Gens brings up a great point. It's because mid-majors develop their kids. That's absolutely right. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I'm not going to lie. If I'm a coach, I want those kids that are going to stay, but if – I have Zion Williamson. Okay, now listen, come to my school. I mean, I'm okay, name, name another really good besides you know, like the – you can probably name five really good ones and go underneath that. Mm-hmm. You're, you're the one-and-done guys who've left, like let's just say some of the Kentucky guys who've left. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, what's the guy's name who played for – got drafted by the Lakers and then got hurt? Um, left-handed guy. I watched him play when they played Wichita State. It just slipped. Anyway, he was one of those guys who left after his freshman year. He got drafted maybe in the top ten. He hasn't done anything. Right. He's been terrible. And what what good is he? I mean, yeah, Zion, oh, yeah, I could see why, uh, yeah, I want to recruit him. Mm-hmm. But to get these guys that are going to turn around and leave that are not at that level, yes. and that impactful where they're game-changing. Well, then I'm probably changing. not going to ruin it. That's exactly right. Yeah. Well, think about, you know, we go to these coaching clinics every, every fall and, and all the different college coaches that they bring in, and they talk about – we don't get the the prime time players, but we go out and you talk about a system. We're going to get a specific type of player that has a specific type of skill set that whether it's we need somebody that's defensive minded or we need somebody that's going to be that point guard, somebody that's going to be that three point shooter, whatever. They they have to go out and they have to find those diamonds in the rough that says, hey, this is this is going to be a system player for me for three, four years. And and I, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you, you. I, well, I, I think that the, the can, <laughs> the concept behind that is is, I think that a lot of the mid major programs, I mean, let's be honest. If I'm a mid major program, I know I'm typically not going to get those top twenty five guys. So I'm going to find a guy. I'm going to find a core group of kids that that I think develop into my system into whatever I'm trying to accomplish. You know, if I'm if I'm running. You know the flex offense, and, and I've got some guys that can shoot it. What are you, you looking know? at me for? I run the flex. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, you you got to so, think about all. I those. was waiting for Grinnell, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think that it, as a as a coach and a mid major, I mean, you're looking at some guys that are going to develop into players that are going to help you down two or three years down the road. Yeah, um, where these. These blue blood programs, they're looking for guys that are going to help them right now, mm-hmm. um, right now, right in here, and then give the opportunity. Where 
the the core group of mid majors are typically looking at jun- when they're juniors and seniors. Those guys are, have been been there together. They've learned each other. They've learned the system. They learned the program. They learned the coach. And all of a sudden, now you see the success. And I think that plays a lot down to high school sports too. I mean, you think about it. Uh, a lot of these quality programs have got guys that have been in their program for you know as freshmen mm-hmm. and started developing and learning the program learning the you know the, the whatever they're trying to accomplish and by the time they're seniors you know they're they're quality they're quality teams that oh, have it, some it, at the teams. high school level it's even it's starting way before they're freshmen oh yes i yes. mean yeah, yeah. you know i mean it's starting when you're you're in fourth fifth right, grade if right. you're you know which i you you guys can explain it to me being on on coaching on the boys side but explain to me how Uh-oh. they're not well, third they're grade, fourth grade. How how is somebody? How's the prediction of a third, fourth grader by the time they graduate high school? Look at look at. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. No, that's a, I, I, I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard this. This kid's gonna be all state. Okay, yeah. and he's dribbling with his head down. Uh-huh. <laughs> he can't use his left hand. So I mean, I mean it just depends on who's. Is who's it the doing. same thing as football? They where they go to these uh, prospect camps, and that's how they get their stars, or how they get rated. I mean, who you know, six eight, six ten. You got one kid that's six ten can has a I don't know whatever thirty inch vertical, but this guy's got a thirty two. Does he get a Does he get a half more of a star or what? I, I, mean, I mean, I think I, don't, I think colleges from the boys' side know they they send out a lot of stuff all the time. They're mm-hmm. watching. They're, like they've watched live, so I have a couple kids who've been recruited using live stream, mm-hmm. and one, yeah, there you go, Ray. There's <laughs> your plug. But uh, you know they're they're looking at that, but they're also looking at any time that you have your rosters out there, mm-hmm. and if you list your kids that are tall, like six ten kids, mm-hmm. they're they're getting calls. They can't. They might not be able to walk and chew gum, mm-hmm. but by God, they're six ten, right? Mm-hmm. And there's an outside chance this kid can play. And you just never it, – it, it's, it's a crapshoot. It's, it's insane. They'll look at their sizes. They'll look at their, their, their height and weight, and then they're going, oh, okay, well, I'm getting letters, and can you pass this along to so-and-so? Mm-hmm. Here, I'm contacting about this kid. I, and in the past, and I don't want to ever say a kid's name, I've had some kids who I'm thinking, why am I getting stuff for them mm-hmm. and there, or calls from coaches, from college coaches? And when I start – really saying okay well here i'll send you some film i never hear from them again right but they're all looking at the outside stuff Mm -hmm. that gets the attention Mm that those those stats or whatever they get people's attention their sizes and things like that so it's it's insane how they recruit Mm -hmm. Uh, and i mean well you you also gotta think about like and he's talking about on the girls side i mean there there's some girls that are 511 as Mm -hmm. seventh graders and are pure solid basketball players as seventh graders but never really grow never really get any better because they're they're at the top of their game as a seventh grader you know the people schools are looking at them and all of a sudden you get into high school and they've never grown a, a lick and never per, improved their game mm-hmm. um and, and but then the opposite side of that you may go into a seventh grade tryouts and cut a kid that maybe be right now four foot eight but <laughs> you know they may turn into by the time they get in high school, they're a, they're a six foot girl that that's a solid player and could have been a solid player for you, but you cut her as a seventh grader, and all of a sudden now we've lost that complete system of that girl. She's you know she's basically done with. Well, and, and, and I see this in boys a lot. You have a seventh and eighth grade kid who's six foot tall, mm-hmm. and he doesn't ever dribble a basketball. He just stays on the block mm-hmm. and gets a gets the pass into him, and then he shoots over everybody because he's bigger than everyone, and he scores. Mm-hmm. And then he gets to the high school level, and everyone catches up. Mm-hmm. And uh, now he's got to put the ball on the floor because I can't play him in the post. He's yes. only 5'11". Mm-hmm. So even though I do play 5'11 post players, as he knows. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, he's 5'11", and he needs to handle the ball a little more. And, uh, you know, that's something you got to get enriched in your program. And it's a totally different ball game at our level. Oh, yeah. And then you're looking at KU and all these people. I mean, but but those schools too, they're they're out looking for oh, eighth yeah. graders. Did, didn't Kentucky try to sign it or try to pin an eighth grader a few years ago yeah. or something? Yeah. How'd that work out? Yeah, it didn't work out very well. Oh, did did he not grow any? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know where he's at now, but he's not at Kentucky. Okay. Well. But. Uh, Oh, okay. You know, we, we were talking about this. I think it was you and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, we're going, we're at a college clinic, and a guy was, coach was sitting next to you, and 
and, and John Calipari's <laughs> talking about, you know, he's talking about his system and whatever he's, you know, the dribble drive and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know, I've got this like, six-foot-one guy that can, you know, put it down. And, and he turned, coach turns over and looks at you and goes, do you have any six-foot-one guys that can put it down from the, from the free throw line? No. So what good does that do me, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I think that you also got to look at that kind of thing. I mean, does he, he does, that doesn't develop into my kids in play and signed up. So <laughs> I think that changes a lot of stuff. Well, I know? was just down at Cape, <laughs> and I saw a 5'9 kid do a between-the-legs windmill and slam it home. And I, I don't have any kids don't, that can do that. And, like and, that and Dylan's team played Justin Ford, uh, the other Ford. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> they walk on the court, and there's a guy 6'10". I mean – Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I don't have any six. What if any of those guys. kids care about their education? Oh, I'm sure they. Pro- <laughs> I mean, I just hope they make good grades. That's they, all I they care. They were about. from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Well, you know, I mean, but uh, maybe the education's good down there. They can hoop, know. and and it was crazy that kid that was only like five nine, but he could jump out of the gym. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that, it, yeah, I don't have any of those kids. No, no, and then no. I think that changes con- the concept of it a lot. Well, I mean, honestly, when when when. when my kids always watch college basketball, and we'll we'll talk about it after you know during practice, after practice, whatever. They're like, do you see so and so play? Almost at this point, when you're looking, especially at the the big time teams, big time programs, it's it's almost to the point where it's like this is where I wish we could go. Yes, <laughs> and the, the athleticism, and you're like, man, what would I do with that? What could I do with one of those kids <laughs> who can do? That mm-hmm. and watch. That's what you would do. Yeah, you I mean, I was just like, watch. man, this is, okay, guys, we're gonna roll the ball out today, uh-huh. and you guys just do go. that. And go. I'm gonna stand over here and pretend like I know what I'm doing, <laughs> clap and yell and stuff like that. But in mid major, bring anyway, right? You know, like yelling, <laughs> it's like yelling and stomping and um, cursing. So no. I, I think, yeah, well, it's to a myself, show. We, to nobody myself, does. I would nobody never does do that. that. I, yeah. So, on that note, thanks a lot. We're going to go ahead and go to another break. <laughs> We're going to turn over to Ray before there, I cuss and there's swear. There's the music, my friend. There's it me. wasn't on you this time. <laughs> ah, you know, we have to we have to, Ray, we have to make sure yeah. that when Riley is doing this big, long spiel, we just hit the music on Ray this. Ray is right. getting better. Ray is getting better. Uh, yeah. No, no, he's get getting worse because well, I haven't got any of those, those smarts. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's keeping me on his good side. He needs me on Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, okay, okay so real, me trouble. Hey, Right. Right. Real quick before we oh, go, we, go. we go need people's. Uh, we need some votes on on our comments for what our our traveling trophy yep. needs to be. What's what's the name for this thing? It could yep. be obnoxious. It could be funny. I don't care. We need something Touch really it. good. Touch there you go. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, you know, look at him. Look. <laughs> he says no. hey, somebody asked. Wow, you like we, trophies? Somebody asked. Can we drink from that? Absolutely. Uh, you know what? We can make it to where we can. <laughs> the winner tonight will drink a drink from that. We drink, drink from it. Yeah, we'll make right. it work. A All drink right. of water. There you, go. Drink water. <laughs> there you have it. There you go. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break here. We'll be right back. You're watching the Coach's Box. And I'll say real quick, um, you know, I really admire what you guys do with this. I think everybody who's ever tuned into one of these, whether it's a Legion game, whether it's a high school baseball game, with basketball, football, whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, I've heard nothing but tremendous feedback uh, about Livestream STL and what you guys do and the quality of production, things like that. I would really encourage anybody who's involved in athletics throughout the county, uh, or really anywhere in the metro area, uh, anybody who's interested in sponsoring activities to get on board and get involved with this. I think it's added a ton to what we do here. It's added a ton to the program. Uh, you guys are a class act. And you're, you're committed to doing things the right way, and we really appreciate that. Since their inception in 1980, SMCI has always been about high integrity and treating people the way you would want to be treated, just like family. Mostly known as a commercial contractor, SMCI has now decided to give the family treatment to everyone. They are now opening their residential department to the public as home by SMCI so everyone can experience the home treatment. Everyone deserves maximum comfort in their very own home. Isn't it time you come home? Contact SMCI at 636 
866-337-4444 or on the web at homebysmci.com. I wonder what Coach Jarvis is up to. Hang on a minute, I got a call from Blair. What? <laughs> ah. What am I doing? I'm sitting here watching the coach's box. What you guys do for Jefferson County sports, it doesn't go unnoticed by the coaches I in all that. sports. Yeah, all I sports. That. You know, I, I have a lot of friends that are ba head, you know, basketball coaches, and and uh, I've been, you know, of course, around Jefferson County all my life and followed all kinds of sports, even before I got into the coaching. So, what you guys do to help promote it with the kids is unbelievable, and we we appreciate you guys yeah. for for you guys to take your time and what you do. Um, is awesome. Just yeah. awesome. Yeah, we try. We work hard, and uh, you know, we we think they they deserve it. You know, the kids deserve to be able to be seen, and and if we can turn out, um, you know, kids in the community to better them, get them in college, and uh, make them a better citizen, that's that's the that's the key. Where's the game? Where's the game? Where's the game? There's the game. Livestream STL, now available on Roku. back here thanks so much for watching the coach's box we're going to start uh, our third segment here and before we do i want to thank so much joel over here at uh the la Pachanga mexican restaurant here we appreciate him he's a great guy here you get a chance to come on out here check out la Pachanga's located at 1185 scenic drive in herculaneum you can call 636-475-4888 or you can check them out on the web la Pachanga mex Com. Also, our friends over at USA Mortgage, Justin Neal, the branch manager. A home of possibility, that's the USA Mortgage's little, little saying there. Located at 115 West Gannon Drive in Festus. Give them a call 314-287-4572 or festus.usa-mortgage.com. Last but not least, we want to make sure mention this also to this tuesday pending weather we'll keep an eye on the weather because there is a chance a little bit of a weather a little bit of a weather issue but 5 30 and 7 30 right here at la pachangas you can uh, come into the watch party that we'll have the roku up running for both of these double headers mr riley blair myself and mr Stuart mcmillan will be out uh, at charleston um, and we will be Having that live to you here at 5.30 and 7.30 out at, out at La Pachanga here. We'll have that watch party between Festus and Charleston. So check that out on Tuesday. We start our last segment, boys. And uh, is there something that we want to uh, we want to finish up uh, our, our last uh, part here real quick, and then uh, we'll, we'll move on? But uh, what do you want to do there, Chris? It's well, I, I mean, if anybody out here – in Lapis tonight has any questions start making your way over yep, here we've got we a really chair wanna, right here for we you had, we, we, we'll kind of line you up and get you in here and ask some questions you can be on the show unless you're camera shy 
like I am. I don't, I don't like being in front of the camera talking. You're always camera shy. I am. Well, I mean, when you have a face for radio, that's what that's happens. Right. <laughs> and we got to mention out there, though, if you're in the building and you have a question, you get your name put in the opportunity for a $25 gift certificate to here at La Pachanga, and I will personally hand that to you that's right. as the winner, as Coach Miller said. That's so. right. Or if you want to come over here and just make fun of me, like Coach McVay <laughs> said, you're more than welcome to do that. Hey, and I'll fight you later in the parking lot. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just kidding. As but, long as you come over here, get on the air and ask your question or just comment or on something about anything, we don't care at this point. Um, put your name in there and get an opportunity to win a $25 gift certificate. So if you're in here, come on over. Your chances right now of winning are pretty high. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> There's nobody in line. Nobody's so. in line. Not everybody wants. <laughs> That's, I mean, I, I would think that Tara Lynn would be, like, right here. No, right I know. Here. I thought like she was waiting on her. Yeah, Tara Lynn, are you over there yeah, somewhere? I, I think mean. she's out in the crowd. She's not, <laughs> she don't want to be on camera. That's probably what it is. She's too shy. <laughs> But anyway, now we'll go ahead and give people time to figure this out if they want twenty-five free dollars to eat here. But uh, as far as you know, mid majors are concerned, and, and what we're all looking, uh, what we're watching on TV. I, I mean, one of these days, I think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. They're gonna, they're going to break through and they're going to win because I think basketball is starting to level out so much mm-hmm. throughout the game. And I, Butler was, I, I was really pulling, mm-hmm. really pulling mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. Butler. First year, obviously, to come short to Duke. The second year, I really hate it because I don't like UConn. But, um, you know, it, it, hopefully that, that changes. I, and I, one thing I wanted to jump in, and we, we had, uh, had kind of mentioned it a little bit, and we I don't know if we were going to put it in the show plan, so I'm going a little off-key. Uh-oh. But, and you'd ask why. Do you think we should be cha- – in, in men's basketball, in college men's basketball, should we change from two halves to four quarters? Oh, Hundred percent, hundred percent. Four agree. quarters. Absolutely. I mean, does it not look ridiculous to have two halves of basketball? <laughs> it's four quarters. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a. I mean, the the women's game did it, mm-hmm. and it looks fine. Yep. They get their TV timeouts. Right. People right. get paid. Yes, mm-hmm. but yeah, which is some, what it's all about. It, oh, yeah, see. well, you know, the athletes when you're at Kentucky, that's what it's all about. Getting <laughs> oh, paid. Uh, Kansas, Kentucky. It's called what? KU, not UK. Get I it just, right. I you? said Kansas and Kentucky. My I used goodness. the full. <laughs> I didn't say any. turn those U and the K. Upside down. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Either way you look at it, it still looks like cheating to me. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> we can do this all day. Well, the only school that's got caught is MU. So I mean, I mean, no, we didn't go. Oh, we turned caught. ourselves well, in, but like, you still got caught. You still well, got punished because we actually turned ourselves in. <laughs> like, listen, they, you, they did what was right. Like, listen, this is what we did. Yeah, it was wrong. It's, Bad we're boy. taking your scholarships. And we all know how this worked out. So it's not cash cow. So we're going we're to take all this stuff away from you. Either way. But, it, you know, what, at what point does this change where we have two halves and four quarters? I think it's insane. When, when's it going to change? Why? Well, I don't understand why it hasn't changed. I mean, why, what, what's the tradition? What is it? I, I don't know. I mean, why, first off, who knows this? Why do we have two halves? Well, Anybody know that one? No. Okay, well, we're all dumb, so trivia is going to go really well. <laughs> trivia is going to be I have solid. no idea. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I got good I, trivia I, I questions. I kind of like too. halftime because oh, yeah. you get to make a few adjustments, <laughs> have a good speech sometimes, you know, a little. Yeah, but I mean, I like that end of the quarter time, mm-hmm. too, because That's... it really does break that up where you oh, can yeah, say, I agree. okay, hey, guys. Well, I mean, we're, we're down 15, like 20 points. Let's I like that opportunity to set a play up at the end of the quarter, come right out if it's our ball or whatever, change it up a little bit, makes it something. No, I mean, you you don't see that in college basketball typically, I mean, unless it's a timeout, you know. Yeah, after timeout time plays, whatever, that's, but, that's but, pretty common. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, you play in four quarters, I think that that kind of makes the game a little bit more – meaningful is it side of a of a quarter you know hey let's go out and win this quarter let's not win this half which i think is a little bit more difficult when it comes down to it is if you're going to have an opportunity to win the quarter or the half um i think that changes a lot of a perspective of a of a coach in a in, in a standpoint is to uh, make it, that happen we need to make mr maddox come yeah, on listen, up here if you want to, if you want to get a chance to win 25 dollars Come up, John, and you ask. gotta sit you gotta right there and ask question. that question. Come on, don't be shy. I mean, it's twenty five dollars up. Twenty five dollar gift certificate. Come on <laughs> over here, sit. <laughs> sit. Try for it. tonight. Jump on in. Let's I jump mean, into this. Okay, do it. if John doesn't want to do it, I'm sure his lovely wife Sonia would love to sit at this seat and ask that question. 
Hey, right now it's any the first person, then the next person now it's fifty percent chance. Uh-oh. Somebody, uh oh, here we go. We got some there movement. Breaking news. Uh, here we go. Breaking oh. news. We got somebody to come on live here. Oh man! Right, now, try, now listen, you're not going to ask John's question, Absolutely are you? I am. Oh. <laughs> I mean, hey, good for you, but yeah. come on. <laughs> you're going to share it with each other. He wants yeah. twenty five dollars. <laughs> split dinner. The girls were thirsty, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what question you got for us? So the question is, if, if it, they wanted to know who was going to have the most technicals called on them this year. Out of us four? Out of us four. four. Ooh. Ooh. I'd say that this guy right here. <laughs> I think this guy right here is going to No way. I had, one. <laughs> I had one, and it didn't even count. I'm going, going with you. Oh, I'm going with you. Yeah, I'm really? going with you. Hey, yeah. how many did you have this year? Two. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, hey, let me, let me just see. Riley, zero. Zero. We kept track. How many times have you been kicked out of a game? Zero. How many times has any of you guys kicked <laughs> wait, out? Wait. Zero. Oh, well, no, you have. Real games. Well, no, wait now. You said games. Summer League, <laughs> yes, I did. One. Summer League, you but had. But I didn't. I, I stayed. So. Uh, Riley had three technicals and was ejected from a game. In Just the three? I, I thought I was, like eight. I was ejected twice. In the same and then, game. And in the same game. And then had. Is that possible? In the same game? Wait, wait. Bo- uh, did, uh, Bobby Valentine did that too. He got ejected from the game. He came back with a, uh, mm-hmm. like a mask or a mustache and, and the the glasses. and the glasses. Yeah. You can, you can do that with the COVID. I really felt bad about it. I really felt bad about it after the fact that I realized that this guy that was officiating the game was a 18 year old senior that just graduated high school so i really felt terrible about the situation For two seconds but you know the, the whole point of the reason why i got into the argument with him was because i asked him a question and he didn't know the answer to the question so he ignored me and that made it even worse if you don't know the answer to the question just say hey i don't know i'd rather you do that than ignore me and not give me any answer at all so that just infuriated so me a little bit. Have more. you seen how much the refs ignore you? Wait, oh, <laughs> oh, they don't. Are you kidding me? Not anymore. Have they you? Don't. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> I've, I've, had, I've had them tell me how much they ignore you. You know, listen, I, I, I normally Not wouldn't I side with, with Sam and Jason on this, but they've said the same thing. If, if you mic'd him up in the game, you could charge more to get in. <laughs> oh, maybe so. That could, be, that could be some outtakes. See, there you, you go, Ray. Ray, you, you go, are missing Ray. out on the gold mine. You, <laughs> you saw that from 60 feet away? <laughs> <laughs> May have said that pretty classic. <laughs> That's pretty classic. That's pretty classic. Look, even Crump says it's going to be me. I'll yeah. let you go with that one. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate hey, your question. You. I, I don't see why, why everybody thinks it's me. Well, I mean, you like to tell jokes, and sometimes they get misinterpreted. Okay, listen, now, I did have a good idea that I was going to – if Charles is watching, <laughs> if you get a box in the mail, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it might or might not have petroleum jelly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. And it's all in good fun because I love you. <laughs> but – I was just trying to be funny. We gave him a lot of crap on the show that night when yeah, he came on the true. show. Yeah, I know. It was a lot of fun doing that, too. <laughs> he took it like a champ, though. Yeah, he, did he did not even back down about it oh, at all. Okay, so I, I was having a conversation today. Somebody asked me today at a prior event what games I got technical <laughs> this year. And I knew that one because that stood out. I can't remember the other one. Like, which which game was this? Which it was against was the, uh, the first round of uh, uh, Bruce Thomas. Uh, what did I do? Gosh, oh what? Um, I, probably, I mean, I'm I mean, sure I, it was. This guy over here, these guys over here were giving me a. I was at practice, and they were giving me the scoop. They were over at the game because it was right before he got playing. So they were over there, and they were telling me about the story that you got teed up already. Oh, oh we played Northwest that first game. Yeah, yeah. And was got, it Northwest? Yeah. No, no. It was then it, it was a second. McKinley was the one because I wanted to time out from. It was McKinley. It was McKinley. Oh, that was, was a terrible McKinley. game. Yes. Yeah, that's probably true. Yes, I wasn't was. very happy. No, you were. You I was were. not my happy place. <laughs> and I can get hey, if I go into that mode, man. It's it's scary. I don't know where it'll go. But it took them about ten or twelve minutes for telling you to sit down. That's what I heard. Well, I mean, you know, because unless they tell me to put the seatbelt on, I ain't going to put it on. <laughs> okay? I, I mean, listen, this show's a coach's box. That is the coach's box. I'm going to use it until someone tells me I can. Hey, but you didn't get the stop sign, so you, we're good. Yeah, you didn't get I, I have before. <laughs> and then I got – I said, oh, I see your stop sign. Yes, and, he yeah, and he was on the baseline on the other end. I didn't say anything mean to yes, him. You need to check the comments. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> what, what do we got? What do we got, Blair? Any open coaching positions right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, Blair probably needs another coach. I do. I, I hey, always. Crump, I'm sure he'll hire you. He's got like Come 20. On. Come on, Dave. Come there on, you Dave. Go. Come on, Dave. 
Hey, I'll take hey, you. you. Hey, get another gun. Get another one. Be the Herky thing. Get like 7,000 coaches. I don't want 7,000 coaches. <laughs> oh, sure you do. <laughs> I'm going to miss a lot, so I always want more and more coaches. That's just part of it. The more eyes, the better for me. All right, so does anybody else out there have any more questions that's not who's going to get technicals? Anybody, anybody else? It, any, anybody. Well, we've got, we got one winner right now. Got one person we in the pot. Got one winner. Nobody anybody else? else. I mean, Crump has asked a lot of questions on the way, but he's got to he, be here. He needs to know? be here to win. It's <laughs> Had his opportunity. I'm yep. telling you, that's, that's tough. I'm surprised Tara Lynn hasn't jumped in here and asked something. Come I've on. been waiting. I'm like, oh. yeah, you're like, you're trying not to, you try not to get that whole, you know, nepotism to the show winning prizes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Are you related to anybody on the show? No. Well, I would, <laughs> I would like to use the gift certificate. So. <laughs> <laughs> on up towards tonight. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean you on. come in here every every week, and how much do you say you spend all the time? Uh, it's, uh, I'm rough when I'm paying for them too. It's usually fifty to seventy dollars. It seems. Yeah, I mean, you know, Evo nice becomes discount. a wash at that point. Yeah, right. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> hey, here's a question. Did you or did Maybe you not drink you out a of question. a cup tonight from another school? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not. <laughs> oh. is, there, is there any pictures? Do we any need to bring a witness? Do we have a cup? Is there any proof? We have I cup? think there's a cup. It's there right might, there. there no. might be. <laughs> We're talking about this one over here. I'll get it for you. <laughs> Ray's going to be a good guy right here and, and get the evidence. I know, hey, Tara Lynn didn't see you drink out of this, but. Let's put this right here for everybody to see in front of Jason. He received this as part of a, a present today from an anonymous person. Anonymous donor. Broke yeah. Up to them. I mean, I couldn't let the stuff, the soda that was in there. Yeah. Go. I mean, <laughs> show us the, like, show like, us the cup, it, though. you got to show bring, us the bring cup. It back. Come on, I don't want to show the cup. <laughs> oh, look at this. Here, hold up, hold a little up. zoom in here. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not a there district championship cup. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> You know, like this commercial, he had the net, he had the basketball. I don't know what you're I cannot confirm or deny any of this. See, I almost wore my district basketball shirt, the one I had to buy. Because I was going to wear it tonight and say, yeah, this is the only way I get a district shirt. (laughs) That's rough. But, you know, for anybody who doesn't see this, it's a St. Pius Tenth High School. And, uh, yeah. Enjoyed that drink out of there. 60 years? Yeah, Yeah, 60 years. 60 years. 61 now. 60 years. Yeah, it's been around. (laughs) Yeah, I appreciate that, though. That's good. Way to represent. I wish somebody would have got a little bit of that photo evidence, though. It'd been great. No no (laughs) proof. (laughs) Well, you know what, Ray, in the meantime, while we're waiting for anybody to come up with a question. Yep. And to ask Is it us. time to load up the I, questions for him? I think we yeah, can start doing time. trivia. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, for uh, our obnoxious trophy. Yeah, you're really excited. I had about like this. I had Kim English, <clears throat> Booker. I had Kareem Rush, use. Anthony oh. Peeler. Wow. I had all kinds of guys that. to talk about. Well, we can still use I'll some ask. Of that. I'll ask. Uh, quick, I don't want to hear about Kentucky. Fa- favorite favorite team. Favorite college team. Duke. Duke. Yep. Kentucky, obviously. Absolutely. Mizzou. 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 Oh my god. Mine. For a long time, it, where there were two teams. Obviously, it was Mizzou when I was growing up. I, I mentioned Steve Stepanovich. Y'all oh. don't even know who he is because I'm that old. <laughs> but um, but I Mich- thought it was John Sumvold. John Sumvold, Anthony nice Peeler, one. you know, all those guys, great. But Michigan. Michigan, Michigan Wolverines. Yes. Michigan Wolverines. Oh, the Fab Five. You know, five. the Fab Five. Mm-hmm. Well, that was fun and, times. And then also, lately, Michigan State has been pretty str- strong. So, Spartans. So, there you go. I, but I'm bo- I was that's where I was born. So, but, I, but I, you know, I lived there for three that. months and then yeah. came back here. So, yeah. all right. So let me uh, set up these. All right. Questions. So you're gonna have to go over the rules here for us, Ray. <laughs> so the rules are this. I'm gonna ask no the rules. question. There are no anything rules. anything but the hair. <laughs> there are rules. No rules. No. How many questions do we there have? There are four questions. Perfect. Um, there are. Put your technology away. Oh. Yeah, put your technology <laughs> away. Turn there, are, it down. there are four questions. <laughs> Listen, Kentucky, put it away. <laughs> We're going to ask one question at a time. You're going to give me the answer, or your answer. I'm going to give you the right answer, and then how you just need to write down. Be know, an honest person. Be, be honest on your honor. Who is the right oh, I win this. <laughs> <laughs> so, question number one. Here we go. Do we need some music for this, too? Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Here we go. Question number one. I like this cup over here. I want to drink out of it. Who is the only head basketball coach to win both an NCAA national championship 
and an NBA title. Is it Pat Riley? I wrote it down. <laughs> Is it? He might be a winner. Oh, I know this one. Mike Krzyzewski? Is it? I'm trying to think of another one because it's not right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Well, Man, you uh, came up with all try, No, the one that I was thinking in my head wasn't right. Is it? I'm trying to think of somebody else. But, <laughs> well, then you're um, good. But I've already, I've already, I've already uh, gave the correct answer. But us um, know who that is. I've got another one. Is it Larry Brown? That's a good one, too. So That's three questions we got to answer. Three answers. Like a, B, or C. So, say the question again now. I'm confused. Who is the only head basketball coach uh-huh. to win both an NCAA national championship and an NBA title? As a coach or just as, as a general? coach? Oh. Do we have our answers? What were the three choices again? <laughs> no lifelines. Coach K. Uh, Pat Riley. Larry Brown. All right. Mr. McVeigh, we're going to start with you. I guess A. Mr. Pat Riley. Pat Riley? Mr. Pat, Pat Riley? Riley? Larry Brown. Larry, Larry Brown? Brown. It's Larry Brown. It's Larry the Brown. answer is Larry Brown. Wow, man. Yeah. See, I'm out. So. Because for a second, was it as a as a player? That's what I'm saying. That's, players, why, that's why I had to ask again. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's what you. It's like man, you throw me off. All right, that it was one. Larry Brown. I knew that one. Coach, oh, yes. And I'm out. I lost that one. What? Well, there's only <laughs> cha-ching. <laughs> Wait. Uh, hey, hey, you might have a Jarvis shot Miller right. one. Yeah. <laughs> Question yes. number two. Girls coaches zero. Here yes. we go. <laughs> Boys coaches one. <laughs> Who is the all-time leading scorer in men's basketball or college basketball? Men's college basketball. Oh, boy. The all-time leading scorer. Is it Michael Jordan? Is it Larry Bird? Is it Pete Maravich? Or is it... Um, I'm trying to think of that guy's name real quick. I'll give you this, those three. Off. I'll just give you those three. Try to throw us off. Julia Serving. <laughs> Did you say those three again? No. <laughs> uh, Jojo White. <laughs> Chris Miller. He's a pistol killer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Michael let's, Kidd. Let's go, let's go on this side. We'll start with Mr. Miller. Pistol Pete. Pistol Pete. That's who I got. Mr. Pete. Yeah, Mr. Pistol Pete. Pete. All right, Pistol Pete. And you, same. Yeah. It Pistol is Pistol Pete. Pete. In only three Maravich. years of eligibility with no three-point line. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Right. Yeah. With 40 points a game. 40 nice. points a game with no three-point line. So all right. I, I had green first, but I scribbled that out. <laughs> mm-hmm. It wouldn't have been correct. I know. And Lou Alson. He, he might be the winner over here. This guy's all the loser. I don't know what he's really <laughs> I don't know nothing. Well, I never thought Larry Brown was going to be the first question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that kind of this, tricked us a little this bit. This is the gimme question. We already actually brought that up. So, um, 1991, University of Michigan. Most of the freshman recruiting class of featured Jimmy King, Jalen Rose, Chris Weber, Ray Jackson, and Juwan Howard. What was the collective nickname given to the group of players? Oh, I just... <laughs> do, 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 do you want to give the answer? Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's okay, definitely not the Fantastic Four. <laughs> <laughs> we should not. We're going to start with Ry- Riley. Who got the Fab Five? The Fab Five? Okay. Fab Five. Same for everybody? Fab, Fab Five. Five. Everybody's <laughs> right. Oh, this could be it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Could be between you two. Winners over here. Last oh, question. This is going to be a good one. Because this, this may throw all four of you guys. Mm. Which of these players scored 50 points in an NCAA tournament game in 1987? <laughs> Great one. Walter Berry, Keith Smart, James Worthy, or David Robinson? 87. 1987. And we'll start with Mr. Jarvis, who is three for three right now. Can we get those choices again? James no, Worthy. No, no, yeah, no, I give, I no. Give, I give all four. No, no, that's, you didn't give me. 
That's um, terrible rules. It's because I have. See that from five feet away. <laughs> I could have solved okay, it. So I already have an answer. So, all right, all right. I got David Robinson. Okay. Well, I'm a, I put David Robinson. Okay. Okay. That's what I got, Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson. Mr. Worthy. It is David Robinson. Oh, yeah. I just went out on limb just to hopefully yeah, get the David loser. Robinson. <laughs> and and I, I believe we have a tie breaks. over here. Yeah, we're, we're two and two. We're three and oh. You're four, okay. four, 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 four and oh. Four and oh. So these guys are Hold four. On. So how about. I got another question. How about let us let me ask the question. Oh, right. oh, shoot. Let me find it real quick. We let can me have find a good the one. questions here. Yeah. Let me find a good one here real quick, too. So um, I have to go to my, my, my bag of uh, questions here. I can ask a good one. I got one out of my this head right now. This is an NBA one. That's not an NBA <laughs> one. I so you don't a, like your question. I need, you don't like there, well, there's NBA and uh, this is all NBA. Here's a good one. Th- this one's NBA This and and uh, the ABA. Oh, it's me and Miller. Okay, I so know. here it is. Just this question right here. Here it is. I got to beat him with something. And I'm not going to give you uh, I should throw choices. it just so that way you have to No choice. choices on this one. <laughs> I'm not going right. to give you choices on this one. Right. Who was the only player voted most valuable player in both the ABA and the NBA? Oh. Mm. oh. You got five seconds. Four, three, two, and one. All right. What is your answer, Mr. Miller? Dr. J. Yeah. Julius Irving. That is correct. That's right. Let me see what if I can get another one. I knew that one. That was uh, easy. Yeah, stuff. sports questions about the only ones I right. answer at trivia night. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe some history questions. Maybe. <laughs> what are you teaching in? <laughs> history. Uh, hey, unfortunately, I, all these are NBA questions. Hey, you hey, have hey, a do you, let me college answer. basketball. And you all have a college NBA. basketball oh, question? Here go we ahead. go. Here we go. Give it to Give it to uh, Riley here. This is gonna be crap. Who won? The, <laughs> who won the last NCAA championship? What team won the last NCAA Men's NCAA basketball Men's NCAA championship? Not what? last year, but the last one. The last NCAA championship. Got it. Oh boy! All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hold on. Let me write something down there. Five, four, right there. Think three, of something. I don't know. Two, one, and I'm answers wrong. in. Answers in. What do you got? Go ahead. I don't have anything. Virginia. I don't know. I didn't know who it was. That is correct. Virginia, Virginia won there the 2019 is. NCAA championship. Yeah, it would have to be Blair of all people. So. <laughs> that was, that's, that's a pretty that's a decent question. question. I mean, that's awesome. uh, we had all NBA questions, and then the last one we're going to. No, that one was one in college, college. and in NBA. You, you know the amount of competition that's around here. Is we, we, we don't so like losing. We don't touch it. We don't it's like so losing. thick. No, I don't want to touch it, but he's from Herky. He thinks he would answer, ask a question he knows I can answer. I just want to make sure. You know, but, no, I, I see where right he's here. trending maybe somehow. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Might be trading in that black and red. So oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Goodness. Heard it here first. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, here not, we go. Hey, not that's when good. Calipari comes to call and. Wants them on his staff. Hey, that's true. That's true. Do you, do you ever have that dream and then wake up like, oh, man. I've been on a college staff <laughs> as an undergrad coach, and it was the best experience of my life. Really? Best experience of my <laughs> life. It's oh, good. SIU Carbondale. Yeah, good and he didn't even root for them. I He's know. from <laughs> Illinois, <laughs> and he roots for I Kentucky. I did root for oh, them. He even worked root there. Even worked there as a graduate assistant, we and went, still it's because Kentucky. the colors are maroon. We maroon. went to the Elite <laughs> Eight that year and lost to Kansas for the opportunity to go to the Final Four. One of the neatest experiences of my life. You fill a lot of water bottles. Or I what? did. Yep. I did. I did. That was one of the best jobs of my life. <laughs> water boy. <laughs> <It's too old. laughs> you drinking the wrong water. <laughs> Oh, All right, so real quick, do we have anybody else with any other questions? Otherwise, last questions. Otherwise, we just got to give it away. It's, yeah, anybody, anybody well, out there, anybody. Can we and get, those on the Facebook it, it waves, be and the YouTube waves, real can, quick. Can, can we hey, get Joel in the house to Joel? maybe come bring him on and let yeah. him talk? Can you Where's find Joel? Joel somewhere? Yeah. See if he'll come over well, here. While we're doing that, if you're, if you're, we're going to do this again because we really want to start making this more of an interactive thing. Right. Absolutely. And. Um, this was this was guinea pig number one. Guinea pig number two is Tuesday night. We'll throw this up here real quick. Um, Tuesday night we will be, I guess you and I, 
Yes. And others will be over at um, down in Charleston doing uh, the Jeffco Diamond Cast baseball game between Festus and Charleston. Actually, the doubleheader at 5.30 and 7.30. We're having a watch party here. So if you're interested and you, and you can't come uh, out to the, you know, go all the way out to Charleston, which is two hours away, we're going to bring it to you, but you got to come into La Pachanga's and you get 15% off of your meal by mentioning Livestream SEO. So make sure you come in Tuesday. If not, come out and check out the, uh, if you're interested in checking out the Roku channel also, you can log on to videos.tkdssports.com. It'll also be on the Roku channel. So check that out. And we're going to have Joel come in, pop in, pop in there, Joel, and we'll um, we'll actually get you. Let me see if I can get uh, my camera set up right here. But um, yep. what is, he's, a, he's a busy man. He's busy. She's going to yell at you. We just gonna we're just gonna add, just tell give you some props. Yeah, man, come give on in. Some props. Pop, pop the headset on real quick for a second. There you go. <laughs> well, first of all, we want to say it from the uh, a part of the coaching box here, coaches box. So we want to say thanks for yeah, uh, giving us an opportunity to do our show here. Yeah. Um, you know what a great experience you've uh, allowed us to come in here on on a night and just kind of open your house up and uh, give us an opportunity to, to do this show here. Uh, so we want to say, first of all, thanks uh, for that. And, uh, you know, um, hopefully that we can generate this show to a bigger thing where we can get some more people in here. And, uh, you know, tonight we tried to off- authorize it a little bit different with uh, giving the 15% off right. and, and trying to get you some, some business in here because uh, this guy supports local sports across yeah. the county. Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen it across the county. He's – He's, you know, supported uh, the Herculean Black Cats. He supported Festus. He supported Crystal City. He supported, I mean, all the schools around locally. So I know that this guy means a lot for the community and uh, has been here a lot. So we just want to say thanks uh, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to do this. Uh, is there anything you want to, you know, put out there as far as your business to kind of be a little bit PR maybe uh, that you want to say or anything, you know? Well, uh, first I want to say thank you to you guys to choosing us, you know, for – a Mexican restaurant, like support you guys. Um, we try to do the best we can. So we are since uh, on business since 1997, and we try to do the best we can for the community and for the customers. Uh, so we, what, what we try to do is just um, bring some more people in here. But we try to help in the schools to growing, you know. And uh, anything we can do for for the schools or for anybody else, we can just. We're just here, you know. We just um, want to say thank you to you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, um, yeah, we can do anything for, for, our, for our community. Yes. And I think that's the, some of the things that stands you about above everybody else is the service that you get here. I mean, if, if something goes wrong, you make it right. And uh, to me, thank as you. a business, I, I, I appreciate that coming in here. Um, and I know these guys appreciate the opportunity for us to be able to do this. Um, more importantly, but I always notice that one thing you do is uh, you make it right, um, regardless of the situation. So uh, we appreciate that, and uh, we thank for the opportunity. And Ray, you got anything that you want to add? Yeah, I mean, just thanks so much again. We've we've kind of gotten a cool, uh, a real cool um, relationship here together, and um, it's been really neat to just you know get to know you a little bit and come in. They, they let us come in whenever we want to. We we'll come in for the Anytime. coach's box. We come in for for uh, Main Street Sports and anything like that. So, I mean, um, do us a favor and come on in and, and support these guys because, um, you know, the COVID is pretty much kind of on that pause from the COVID now and, and businesses are opening up. Some are some are jumping, you know, picking up all their business from where they left off. Some are not. And and so, you know, this is a chance to give get a chance to give back and, and uh, get yourself involved with uh, the local uh, – Local businesses around here, especially in Herculaneum. So, um, but we appreciate you know you know you Joel having us out here, and uh, you know we're we're we're, we're going to work on different things. We've got the watch party coming up Tuesday night. Um, you're going to have the Roku channel. See, Joel's the only person that has the Roku channel in Jefferson County right now, and so we're we're touting this whole thing a little bit. But at the same time, come in and be uh, you know just uh, grateful that, that that you're able to come out and uh, and check out local baseball right now we've got going on we'll have football in the, in the fall football volleyball 
uh, girls softball, things like that. And, uh, you know, so we're looking for more businesses to, to jump on board with that too. But we wanted to start here um, because, you know, we just really felt like this was a, a great place to, uh, you know, kind of put uh, put to good ground, you right. know, in a way. So, uh, so appreciate you, Joel. Yes. And uh, thanks for stopping in. We finally get you on. We finally get you on the show here. That's <laughs> thank cool, you, thank right? You. No, thank you. Absolutely. And I want to say thank you to all the customers. You know what you say about the COVID and everything affected all the uh, local business. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but we have a lot of support from uh, our customers. You know, for regular customers. So I want to say thank you to them. Then even uh, I know it's kind of hard right now. It's hard time for everybody. Yeah. But they are always here with us. So I want right. to say thank you to all my customers. I got. Uh, I got one question though. Sure. To be honest now, <laughs> how often is he here? Is he here all the time? Yeah, he has uh, he has a bed in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he lives here. So. That's he's awesome. A, that yeah, is he's, 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 he's like a family a for us. Uh, oh, right. all of you guys. Like a family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially you too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Brother's Pizza, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's good if stuff. You it's good. If you don't know what to order, order that. Mm. Right. I always ask for the Riley Blair special. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everybody seems to know what that is. That's yeah, we're working on a new man, and it's going to be his name. Oh, on the please do it. <laughs> please do it. That would be the best. That would oh be the best. God. needs to the be a Riley food challenge. Blair the Riley Blair special. The Riley Blair food no challenge. No guacamole. No guacamole. No guacamole. No guacamole. There it is. There it is. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, we're going to wrap no, things thanks. up here. We appreciate everybody watching the no, Coach's Box. Thank you, and thank you, Joel. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, guys. And we are going to wrap it up here and we thank you so much again for watching the coaches box again don't forget tuesday night we will be out at charleston get that watch party up there one last time 5 30 and 7 30 come watch it here at la pachangas festus and charleston battling it out and we'll be live riley myself and stuart Mil mcmillan uh, at 5 30 and 7 30 but come out here if you don't want to make that trip out to charleston and uh, you can watch it on the Roku channel. For all of us here at Livestream SDL and the Coach's Box, we're going to say so long. Have a great night. <laughs>